Good evening, everyone, and welcome. I apologize if I did not make it clear. The board will return to our public comment portion at the completion of the budget hearing. We will return to that and have and open it up for public comments after this portion of the meeting. So with that, uh, welcome to the first two public hearings on the 2023-2024 budget. We're here tonight to review the proposed property tax rates and budget for the 2023-2024 school year. Hear comments from the public and approve the proposed millage rates and budget. The order of business and actions taken tonight must follow specific directions set forth in the state statutes and we ask for your cooperation as we go through these legally required format. There will be two opportunities for you to speak this evening. The first, you may comment on the proposed millage rates. Second, you may comment on the proposed budget. And if you wish to speak, you must register separately for each part of the hearing with our staff member at the entrance of the boardroom. After tonight's hearing, the school board will continue to review the tentative budget. We will make changes to reduce millage rates prior to or during the final public hearing, which is scheduled for September 12, 2023. Again, that is September 12, 2023. We cannot raise the millage rate higher than the rate we tentatively set here this evening. On behalf of the school board and superintendent, I thank each of you for taking the time to be here tonight to share your views with us. At this time, I would like to entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Of a motion by Ms. Cook and a second by Ms. Meyer. Mr. Hendrick um, will make some introductory comments prior to the presentation and before we hear comments from the public. Thank you, Madam Chair and board members. I'd like to take this opportunity for your engagement and interest as we formulate this plan for the 23-24 fiscal year. As you know, our budget is directly tied to our strategic plan and we brought both of those to you for a lengthy workshop on June 27th. At the workshop, the budget was laid out in detail covering each component and as in past practice, we'll continue to examine all of the parts of our budget, especially as student enrollment is finalized here in the next couple of weeks. I wanna thank the board again for your engagement with this, your long conversations with Mr. Smith and I'll pass it to Mr. Smith and his team for the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Hendrick. Uh, uh, as you know, our Truth and Millage ad appeared in the Tampa Bay Times this past Sunday. The format for the newspaper ad and the order of tonight's hearing presentations are prescribed by Chapter 200 Florida Statutes. Based on the board's actions tonight, the Pinellas County Property Appraisers Office will send out proposed tax notices. These notices will legally indicate the time and place of our second and final public hearing on our millage and budget to be held Tuesday evening, September 12th, as Ms. Kane mentioned. This proposed tentative budget is based on estimates since the books for fiscal year 22-23 have not yet been closed. The final budget presented in September will reflect the actual results of the current fiscal year. At this time, I'll ask Samantha Chastain, manager of budget FT and cost reporting, to present the millage, and she'll be followed by Mr. Luann Jordan, executive director of budget resource allocation, who will present the tentative budget. Ms. Chastain. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Good evening, Mr. Hendrick, Madam Chair, board members, and staff. Truth and Millage, also referred to as TRIM, requires school districts to advertise their proposed budget and millage rates annually. The district's 2023-24 millage is comprised of the general operating millage, which includes the required local effort, discretionary, and local referendum. The Florida Department of Education determines the maximum state required local effort millage rate that must be levied by the school board to generate its local share of the funding for the district. The local referendum of 0.5 mills was initially approved by the voters in 2005 and 6, approved for the fifth time in 2020-21 for a four-year period. The proposed millage also includes the 1.5 mills for capital outlay. A mill refers to the rate of the property tax commonly paid on the assessed value of homes and business properties. A mill equates to $1 of taxes for every $1,000 of taxable property value. The rollback rate is the millage rate that would generate the same amount of revenue as last year if applied to the current tax roll after adjusting for new construction. The 2023-24 proposed millage of 5.938 is higher than the rollback rate by 10.87%.
Pinellas County's gross property tax value of approximately $140 billion is an increase from last year's value by $15.2 billion, or 12.2%. The proposed millage rate for the 2023-24 of 5.938 represents an overall decrease of 0.42% when compared to the 2022-23 total millage rate of 5.936, or 6.3, excuse me. The required local effort millage has decreased by 0.78%. The property tax Revenue comparison reflects an increase in revenue of $83.7 million over the last year's proceeds. This is a result of the increase in our property tax value. The required local effort proceeds are increasing by about $43.5 million. The proposed discretionary millage will generate about $10.9 million more. The referendum will yield an additional $7.3 million, and the capital outlay millage will generate $21.9 million more than last year. Under the proposed rate, the owner of a $200,000 home, after the deduction of the $25,000 homestead exemption, would pay $1,039.15 in school taxes. This averages out to $2.85 per day. The taxable value of property in Pinellas County reflects an increase on average of 12.2% for the year. The Florida Legislature has set our required local effort, which is also known as refer, or also referred to as the RLE, to 3.19, which is a decrease from the prior year's RLE of 3.215. Some home, homeowners may experience an increase in their school taxes, as demonstrated here, as a result of an increase in property value and not an increase of our le levied millage rate. Please note that this example does not consider the benefits of the 3% save our homes cap. The RLE is an appropriated amount set by the FLDOE. The school board must levy this amount in order for us to receive state funding. It is used for the day-to-day -day operations, such as school staff and utilities. The discretionary millage is used for general operations of the district and to meet additional costs due to inflation. Local referendum funds are used to rec recruit and retain quality teachers, preserve reading, art, and music programs, and provide up-to-date textbooks and technology. The capital outlay millage is the district's primary funding source for maintenance, renovations, new construction, and equipment as advertised on July 30th. At this time, I will turn the meeting back to the board chair to allow for public comment and for the motions necessary to adopt the millage rates. Thanks. Thank you very much. Ms. Christie, are there any speakers for agenda item five? Um, Madam Chair, we have two speakers for item five. The first one is Bronson Odshoff and Mark Clutho. Hi, good evening. I just um, wanted to take a couple minutes to share with you some of my concerns about the increasing tax rate um, or the, the, the actually the tax revenue. So we did talk about that the tax rate, the millage rate is going down, um, but it's important to realize that the the, the tax is still going to increase, right? So even though the, the rate's going to go down, the amount that comes out of our pockets is going to go up. And that's going to be about $83 million. And that's an 11.7 increase. We talked about that or we heard about that in the presentation. And we... We talked a little, or I talked a little bit about this last year as well. And one of the reasons that we talked about is we needed to push through these tax increases was so we can increase teacher salaries. And we did that a little bit uh, last year. But when I look at the budget going forward here, I don't really see a lot of increases there. And I think it's important to realize the compounding effect of these tax increases. So $83 million sounds like a lot, and it really is, um, but that's on top of the $72 million last year. So if you compare what we're doing or looking at doing now versus two years ago, that's a compounded tax increase of $156 million. So we're going to collect that much more than we did just two years ago. And then next year, we're going to look at the, the same thing. And it's going to be more than $83 million. So we have to be careful when we're looking at these tax increases that we just don't look at a year-to-year -year basis, which is high, but the compounding effect as well. 
if you really look at that $156 million over, over the two years, that's about $161 per person if you took all the people in Pinellas County. Uh, so now, but I know in my house, my, my kids don't actually pay any of the taxes. I have to pay them. So if you're a family of four, that's $642 per person. Now, not every household is going to pay that on their property taxes, right? Because, you know, some people rent and, and you know, they don't have a tax bill that's due at the end of the year. But rest assured, you're going to feel those tax increases somewhere. I mean, if you look at across the, the, the raising, uh, the rising rents, one of the reasons why is well, there's a lot of tax increases that are getting pushed through. And it's not just here at the school board, the local municipalities are doing it. And um, the problem, though, is with the school board, as you know, that much less of the school board um, tax revenue, it's, it's less protected by, the, um, by your Save Our Homes cap, um, much smaller amount. So bottom line, we need to rein in the uh, tax increase, 83 million, uh, too high. I'd really like to see a more detailed uh, how that's being uh, Mark Clutho Largo. This is not televised. Shouldn't this be televised? I don't see anything on the screens. Well, the way I see it, it's money squandered. You know, the value of the property goes up regardless of what the millage is. So everybody pays more and you're talking about this big sum here of $202 million for capital outlay. Well, you have that millage rate going to boondoggle after boondoggle. As I've said so many times before, it's science ignored. What would the rate be if you didn't ignore the science? It's a doggone shame. More to come with the budget. Are there any further public speakers? Madam Chair, there are no more speakers. Thank you. May I have a motion and a second to for the approval of the tentative discretionary local effort millage. Have a motion and a second. I need a motion and a second. No, after. I move the oh. board adopt approve the levy. And the microphone. When I move the board approve the levying of a tentative discretionary local effort millage of 0.748 mills as part of the total millage to be certified to the property appraiser of Florida Department of Revenue. Thank you. Second. We have a second by Ms. Cook. Did we have a motion by Mrs. Peters? All right. We have a motion by Ms. Peters and a second by Ms. Cook. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I have a motion and a second to approve the levying of a tentative discretionary local effort millage of 0 0.748 mills as part of the total millage to be certified to the property appraiser in Florida Department of Revenue. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It passes unanimously, 7 to 0. And Mrs. Hine, would you read the item 5.2, adoption of the tentative total millage rates? 
I move that the board adopt a tentative millage rate of 5.938 mills to be set and certified to the property appraiser and to the Florida Department of Revenue. The millage rates are as follows. For required local effort, 3.190 mills. For discretionary local effort, 0.748 mills. For local referendum, 0.500 mills. For capital outlay, 1.500 mills. Tentative total millage, 5.938 mills. This rate is 10.87 great per percent greater than the rollback rate. Second. A second by Ms. Cook. Is there any discussion on the board? And then I have a motion and a second to adopt a tentative millage rate of 5.938 mills to be set and certified to the property appraiser and to the Florida Department of Revenue. The millage rates are as follows for local for required local effort 3.190 mills for discretionary local effort 0.748 mills for local referendum 0.500 mills for capital outlay 1.500 mills for a total millage of 5.938 mills. This rate is 10.87% higher than the rolled back rate. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. It passes unanimously, seven to zero. And will you please proceed with the, the budget presentation? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. This portion of the presentation covers the district's tentative budget for 2023-24. The budget calendar is ongoing throughout the year. During the course of the year, budget updates are provided at board workshops and monitoring is performed through budget analyses and forecasts. In the spring, we typically get a better idea of what the legislative budget is providing for us, whether we can expect an increase or decrease of state funds. Budget steering committee meetings are held during this time frame, primarily for capital outlay requests. In July and September, we hold two public hearings regarding the budget and millage. Tonight is the first of those hearings. As you heard earlier, the second hearing will be held September 12th. Certain parameters guide the building of the budget. We strive to and have been able to retain a 63-37 ratio. This means at least 63% of all expenses are for direct instruction or in the classroom, and 37% are related to other areas such as instructional support, plan operations, and administration. In short, at least two thirds of all funding goes toward expenditures in the classroom. We are required by statute to maintain a minimum 3% contingency. While district policy states we are to maintain a minimum 5% contingency, this budget maintains our compliance with district policy. We also budget so as to support our core curriculum and strategic directions. The majority of our budget is in our general fund. This year, it is proposed to be approximately $1 billion. The second largest funding source is capital outlay at $358 million. The district self-insured health fund is anticipated to be approximately $175 million and represents the district's third largest fund. The total proposed budget for all funds this year is approximately $1.7 billion. Looking at the budget summary for all revenue sources, you see that about 61% of the total budget comes from the general fund. Capital outlay accounts for approximately 21%. The combined total of these two funds comprises nearly 83% of our entire budget. The new year brings several legislative changes. The base student allocation, or BSA, increased to $5,139.73. This is an increase of $552.33, or 12% over last year's BSA. Absent the collapse of certain categoricals, the comparable year-over-year -year increase to the BSA would be equivalent to $112.62. Statewide, funding increased by $2.3 billion, or $75 million to Pinellas, which includes funding related to family empowerment scholarships. Changes in the Florida Retirement System contribution rate are projected to increase district expenditures by $9 million. The teacher salary increase allocation was increased $253 million, or $33.8 million to Pinellas. A $40 million statewide increase has been appropriated for safe schools. The increase to Pinellas is $432,000. A state-funded discretionary supplement of $436 million has been obligated to mitigate the impact of family empowerment scholarships on districts' funding. 
This is a non-recurring funding source. Total operating fund resources are anticipated to be approximately $1 billion. Of that, about $621 million comes from local sources, which includes the half mill referendum. $287 million comes from state sources. The Florida Education Finance Program, or FEFP, is the general fund's primary funding source. The FEFP funding formula utilizes a combination of state and local resources to fund education. Looking at the operating revenue budget graphically, you'll note that local sources represent about 60% of the total operating budget and state sources account for approximately 28%. The remaining 12% comes from transfers and fund balance. The operating budget is used to fund the day-to-day -day operating expenditures of the district. It pays for salaries and benefits, supplies and materials, textbooks, student transportation, utilities, maintenance, and repairs. Viewing the distribution of our operating budget by object, there's little change from previous years. About 58% of our budget is spent on salaries and 23% on benefits. In total, 81% of our operating budget goes towards staffing. Capital outlay funds include revenue from both state and local sources. This fund reflects the revenue and expenditures for construction and renovation of school buildings and grounds. The majority of these funds are generated by the local capital improvement millage, which is set by law and limited to 1.5 mills. These funds may not be used for operating purposes. Rather, they may only be used for capital outlay purposes as advertised. PICO funds are not expected this year for traditional public schools. Additional funds have been provided by, through Certificate of Participation, or COPS bonds. The lease purchase financing of capital improvements through the issuance of COPS bonds is a technique frequently utilized by Florida school districts to finance school facilities. An updated capital outlay plan and facilities work program will be brought to the board at the September 12th board meeting. Changes will include the addition of the 2027-28 year. Our proposed capital outlay budget is approximately $358 million. The budget reflects $212 million in new revenue and $244 million in proposed appropriations. The special revenue budget is comprised of two major categories of federal funds, contracted programs and food service. The total contracted programs budget is approximately $20 million. This budget starts the year off low and builds as the year goes on as we don't recognize the revenue until it is available. Included in this category are the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, the Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief Act, and American Rescue Plan grants. These grants are also referred to as CARES, ESSER, and ARP. It is important to note these grants are limited, non-recurring revenue sources. Food service is a self-sustaining fund as it receives no financial support from the operating fund. Federal reimbursements and local collections are the primary revenue sources. The proposed food service budget is approximately $67 million. The debt service fund is used to account for the payment of general long-term debt principal and interest. This $8.5 million budget represents the debt service for COPS bonds issued by the district in 2017 and 2021. The proposed self-insured workers' compensation and liability budget of $5.8 million accounts for the premium revenue and expenditures associated with the district's self-insured workers' compensation and liability insurance program. The self-insured health fund accounts for the district's premium revenue and claim expenditures with a budget of approximately $175 million. The proposed budget and all supporting documents are on file in the Office of Budget and Resource Allocation. This information can also be found online. At this point, I'll turn the meeting back to the board chair to allow for public comment and the motions necessary to adopt the, the tentative budget. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Christie, are there any public speakers for agenda item six? I believe, Madam Chair, that we have two speakers. Uh, Mr. Ochiff, do you want to speak to item six? Okay, we have one speaker, um, Mark Clutho.
Mark Lutho Largo, school board, $3,258,000. Lot of money there. General administration, three million nine hundred thousand dollars yeah a lot of money and then school administration look at this was it 64 million and when my wife was teaching she used to say just let us teachers teach all that money going to administrators. What a waste. Facilities acquisition and construction, $200 million. There's the big, big problem. Operation of plan, 102,787,000. Maintenance plant, 23,488,000. So with that money going to your buildings, again, you have that cause and effect. The headline reads, will the world we live in today still be habitable tomorrow. Not with the way you're going. The headline reads, this June is hottest on record since 1850. And this from Friday, July 7th. Tuesday was the Earth's hottest day ever. And, of course, July has surpassed June as the hottest month ever. Now, that $200 million, that's more money that's going in the wrong direction, that's going to cause this problem The headline reading here, a grim climate pattern to get worse because you're ignoring science. As I've stated before, look at that new building up there at the Clearwater High School campus. And of course you just celebrated today that St. Pete High School. And what did Amory Lovin say? If it's not efficient, it's not beautiful. How profound. You know, all that money that went into the renovation down there it could have been something efficient. But see, this money here, I know where it'll be going. And to more of the same. You just won't get on the right track. Shame. Ms. Christie, are there any additional speakers for item six? There are no more speakers. Thank you. Ms. Long, will you read item 6.1, the adoption of the tentative budget for 2023-2024? I move that the board approve the tentative 2023-24 budget as presented. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Peters. Any board discussion? Ms. Hine? I just wanted to take the opportunity to I just wanted to take the opportunity to acknowledge that 1.7 billion dollars is significant. It is a significant 
amount of money, and it's our money. It is, it is taxpayer dollars that are sent in to support the operation of these schools, and everybody up here takes every one of those dollars very seriously, and I know a lot of people in our community do as well. Things are expensive right now. We all feel it. Insurance, cars, everything. And so every, every dollar in here, and when it comes to the millage, when it comes to the budget, is important. And so if anybody has ideas, this is all wide open. And you can look at every dollar and how it's spent. You can look at salaries. You can look at materials. You can look at the cost of paper. You can look at the cost of anything that you want to in this budget. And I certainly invite you to. And if you can find anything or make any suggestions where we can make reductions, I would love to hear those. And I'm sure that my colleagues would as well. But it is, I just wanted to acknowledge it is a significant amount of money, and it's something that we take very seriously. And Mr. Smith, in your office, thank you for the amount of work that you do in putting this together and the amount of time you spend, the time that we spend in our workshops, and the amount of information that you give us when we also meet one-on-one -on -one with you and ask our wide variety of questions on it. So I just want to say I really appreciate it and just acknowledge that it is significant, and it certainly deserves any amount of public, public input. that I have a motion by Ms. Long and a second by Ms. Peters to adopt the tentative 2023-2024 budget as presented. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I hear none. It passes unanimously, seven to zero. Uh, next, Ms. Edmond, will you please read item 6.2, establishing the date, time, and place of the second public hearing. I move that the second public hearing on the 2023-24 district budget be held on September 12th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. in the conference hall of the School Administration Building, 301 4th Street, Southwest, Largo, Florida. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Mrs. Heim. Any discussion from the board on the date, time, and place? Seeing none, uh, I have a motion by Ms. Edmond and a second by Ms. Hine to establish the date, time, and place of the second public hearing. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I hear none. It passes unanimously, seven to zero. And uh, finally, Mrs. Myers, will you please read item 6.3 to authorize the submittal of the certification of school taxable value. I move that the board authorize the superintendent to advise the property appraiser of the millage rates, including the required rollback rates, approved at the first public hearing held on August 1st, 2023. Thank you very much. We have a second? Second. I have a second by Ms. Edmond. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I have a motion by Ms. Meyer and a second by Ms. Edmond to authorize the submittal of the certification of the school taxable value. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? There's none, it passes unanimously, seven to zero. There being no additional business uh, regarding the tentative 2023-2024 budget, I adjourn this public hearing of the school board budget. Oh, it's done. No,